Behind me is a fighter jet that I'm here to see if I'm gonna buy. How insane is that? And yes, it flies. This is nuts. I got an email from a guy that said he saw something on Facebook Marketplace and immediately thought of me. And I clicked on the link and Mike Faber, I hate you because I'm now on my way to the airport to go to Memphis to go check these planes out. Uh, the guy told me he was a uh, it was his dad's, I guess. He had passed away, and these airplanes were his. He was a big Warbird guy. That's why I got my sweet Warbird shirt on. He's now looking at possibly selling uh, one of the airplanes. Maybe more than one. We'll find out when we get there. What I do know is that none of them work the way they are. Go figure, right? Because this is Jimmy's world. This is what we do. We're going to head to the airport, you head to Memphis, and then we gotta take about an hour and a half, two hour drive south to go to the middle of nowhere, Mississippi, to go look at some sweet old school fighter planes, warbird type stuff. Time for an airport montage. Why aren't I taking Cameron and Silas and I just flying up to ourselves? Well, I much rather would. However, there's lots of blue and some red and even some pinks up there. And there was a massive weather front that came through yesterday. So I'd have to fly right through it. And as we all know, Cameron still is not upgraded to fly through or over a lot of those bad weathers. So in general aviation, when you have time to spare, go by air. We don't have any time to spare because, let's face it, it's sun and fun, right? We're hanging out with you guys at sun and fun right now. That's my last flight crew. Welcome to Memphis. Local time about 1035 AM. It is a ton of fun to go to a new city and explore and like get a different car and drive it around and try to figure out where the buttons are. And also, thanks to you, I posted and asked about barbecue restaurants in Memphis. A lot of you guys suggested a place called Tops, so that's where we're headed, Tops Barbecue. Silas, you ready to try some Tops Barbecue? Yep. Barbecue bologna? Oh, this is my kind of place. Do you approve? Yeah. Jimmy approved. Before we see the airplanes, I've got one quick stop to make. I've been told this will make all the difference in the world. Yeah, okay, I think this is the right spot he was telling us. This is the spot the guy told me to meet him. He said the uh, crossroads right here, where I'm at. He did mention it might be around midnight before he gets here, but that's right, we got we got time to spare. I brought the uh, the guitar. Maybe I'll learn how to play that while I'm here. He did tell me that he could teach me to be the best pilot in the world, and it would be nearly free, whatever that means. So, all right. Check out what hotel room number we got. Is that awesome or what? This is a very secure location. Let's see, go. Let's see what we got. Good morning. How are you, sir? James. Warren Long. Nice to meet you, sir. Good to meet you. Yeah. Morning. Morning. Yeah. Vernon Ricks. Good to meet you, Vernon. Hi, James. Uh, Come on into the monstrosity. Oh, got a banana thing going. We got a Apache back there. Well, you guys got all kinds of good stuff. Comanche right here? They got nice planes. Is that yours back there then? Yeah, that's our 56 TC. Oh, that's right. That was the 56. That's the Baron. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And a Skyline.
I would love to know the story behind your dad, because I guess you and you, you call him older Vern? I call him old Vern. Yeah. Old Vern? Okay, yeah, just a yeah, yeah. big Vern. I mean, he's got to be half crazy to go find this, and it came from overseas somewhere? Or? He's, no, he, he started uh, doing formation clinics, teaching. Okay. He had a bunch of his friends from air shows that would come and help teach at old Warburgs and stuff. Then Some they the moved, started they showing moved up the L39s. Yeah, and, they moved from Bonanza, T6s and Bonanzas and Yaks started having a jet formation clinic with L-29 to L-39. Oh, okay. We had one guy that brought a, about the second T-6 one, he brought his F-86. Ooh, nice. Yep. Yeah. And he stayed a couple of days, you know, and uh, whatever. He come to ride as a check pilot in the back seat is what the, is what the guy did. And um, then Daddy got to ride in them L-39s and whatever, and, uh, which he should have bought L-39. Those, you know, needless to say. It, those those are, are good planes. That's right. But he did it, and he found, it, he found this. Um, a uh, Continental pilot that flew, Continental Airlines pilot mm. that he knows that flew um, over the water. Okay, so international. International mm. over the water. Um, when they had their days off, they would go through Europe and look. And him and a, him and a partner bought the whole Bulgarian Air Force. <laughs> I think it was 20, 22 or 23 airplanes that were sitting there. That's and they fantastic. bought Fantastic. Yeah, they bought the whole Air Force. Mid, late 90s, something. Like Some, that somewhere in that time frame. So That's do you the, have any idea how much they paid for an entire country Air Force? I don't know. This airplane was, um, the guy had brought it back and Matt and Daddy and I flew out on a Sunday. This airplane was in Texas. Mm -hmm. They had gotten it imported into the country and it was in Texas sitting on the shipping containers and things and we went and looked at it on a Sunday and come back and Daddy and the man made the deal the next the next week or 10 days and they loaded it on the truck and brought it to the shop. Here it is on the trailer oh, when, yeah, it, there you when, go. It, when it came to the shop. So this is how you guys loaded it up on the no, trailer? No, they loaded it. Or, well, I mean, but that, that's how it got transported yeah, that's part here. Of, that's part of the deal. There, there's Warren on the tractor. Um, he said, boy, I wish our Hondas were like this. <laughs> yeah, but... I mean, just that tail section of there is that's pretty cool. Yeah. That looks like a little airplane by itself. Well, then, see, that's me long time ago i was a little bigger hey yeah look at that you had dark hair then too yeah and i was a little bigger too there's mom is stripping all the paint down off of it mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah there you go yeah all that yeah man and that paint was thick it was it was two and three coats on it oh wow yeah yeah Did you find different colors underneath everything yep holy cow i bet it took a two see months see, just to get it, all the paint off of it, it it's getting to Getting to where it didn't have no paint. Get some that's Warren up in there. Golly, you or were, Jimmy. You were all kind no, of. No, that's Jimmy. That's Jimmy. There. Okay, that's Jimmy's Jimmy. up in the engine. Yep. Well, there's some fabric you put it's in that. Fabric, <clears throat> the, the cracks in it, mm -hmm. when the inside meets, you have to fabric all that. It screws up the airflow if you don't. Well, and there, there, there it is with the off the jacks with the drop tank upon it. Yeah, how long did it take you guys to put this thing together? And I don't know. We worked on it pretty hard because he was excited. Oh, yeah. When I got it on the ground, the... I'm going to say that it was probably two years. Yeah, because, I mean, as soon as I got it, the first thing was to get it on something where we could get the tail off. Well, and we had to make a rack to... We called it the chicken flipper, but we had to make a rack to bolt to the wings so that we could twist them. And make them level to put on. And make them level. Oh, I see. Yeah. To to put on, cause see, it, all that holds the wing on is two great big bolts, shouldered bolts about that big. And that's it. There's two big ones at the back, and there's one small one here. Originally, when this was in military use, what did they use a 30 millimeter or something similar to that? Probably a little bigger than the 30 was down I, in the bottom. Wasn't it a, fi a 50 single shot and a had something? Well, it had a gun camera in the nose. Yeah, this little lens up here is your gun camera. Was, was your gun camera, so Okay. That you had your gun camera. Your gun camera was in the nose. Oh, okay. And then see this, this tray that we let down in a little bit up under here. Mm-hmm. That's where we mounted all the avionics, but that's where the cannon cannon mounted. Oh, okay. And you lowered it down to service it. Oh, okay. If you want to crawl up there and look. He added a bunch of extra air bottles so that you had more air for the is brakes. Really, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. And now does this run off of, are these brakes nitrogen, yes. hydraulic, or? Yes, they're nitrogen. So you, how often, how many landings, or you know, how much braking can you do before you have to refill the bottles? I know he did three high-speed taxi runs 
down to like 20 percent, 25 percent after the third one. Yeah. But, what, but now here's what, the deal on, on high speed taxi runs. When you get this baby wound up and you go to woe, and you got to woe, our runway's a little short, mm -hmm. and you got to woe that third time, the brakes done got hot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, if, if you're familiar with them, there's basically an inner tube around the wheel, around the brake drum. Okay. And there's square brake pads, and there's like 15 all the way So around. it goes all the way around that disc? Mm-hmm. And oh, it, there, it's, it's, it's a drum. drum. Oh, it's, it's a, a drum, drum so yeah. it goes out like this. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I see it here. And I don't know if the 17's the same or not, but what happens is when that rubber bladder inflates, mm -hmm. it pushes all these pads out against this drum. And you see how oh, thick it is. Interesting, okay. So and the nitrogen you, just inflates that bladder, expands those pads against the drum. And you can, you vary the pressure with the, um, the control stick. That makes sense. And see, so here's one of your fill bottles here. For? That's nitrogen. Oh, nitrogen, okay. 427 pounds there. Yeah. Uh, if you'll look, all the rubber lines, mm -hmm. He found a, a gentleman that specialized in it, and we they would take the uh, end off the Russian line. The, I mean, it was steel. Mm -hmm. They took it off, and he silver soldered, brazed, whatever you want to call it, that end to an American end, so we could put these Teflon braided stainless lines on. It. Oh, I see. And, okay. And it's all AM fit and stuff. Yeah. Okay. There's, so, there's, so if you so if you have to replace a line, you just get a, a standard USAM AM fit is what you're doing. Okay, and before it was what, like metric or something? Yeah, we'll see where they're screwed on to the actual brake. Those adapters. They, they see, he basically made an adapter here. Right there. Okay, yeah. See, he took the, the metric, it's metric here, yeah. and then he screwed on, he, he, he welded a piece on to where you could put a, a standard AN and fit. And I'm not real sure, but I want to say that the flare, like ours are standard 37 JIC or 45 degree, mm -hmm. they have a different degree on some the flare. Weird, like 27.7 it's, it's point seven yeah. or... It's stoked something weird. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, these lights come down yeah. like this? Yes. Just like the 310? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. They fold down, and I think it's just the one. Is it? It's just this one because these come down just like the 310. That and this looks smaller, actually, seven inch or it's, something, it's or just that one. are they an eight I inch? I didn't remember there being two. Okay. It's just one. So, do you? Is there any record of this? The military history of this plane, if it, and them what it did in just, the military, just what's in them logs. They have a they have a strength coach at the private school. I think he was Romanian. Uh -huh. Him and his wife. I got him and daddy together and. They had paid them, and they translated a bunch of the stuff out of the logs. Oh wow! So that you could see times, and you know, on, on certain things to do like that. And he said that this airplane originally was a single seat fighter. Okay. That they converted it, see, because it's a in the log books it shows 55. Okay. As the original build date. Yeah. Then if you will see on here, it shows 66. Okay. That's when they converted it from a single seat fighter to the two seat. I see. See like where this all of this back seat is? Yeah. That was all fuel. Oh, okay. On the fighter, all of this is all that area back there, they reserved it, had used it for fuel. Okay. They just, you know, put it back and did, did like what we call an IRAN inspection. Yeah. And just, you know, took it and removed that fuel tank and whatever and put the put the stuff in it. Um, and and converted it, made it a two seat. And what the the, uh, the engine I think Matt was telling me it was the MiG-17 engine without the afterburner, or is it still They're the same engine. The only difference between this engine and a, and a MiG-17 is they put a burner on the 17. Okay. And that's where they get the extra thrust from on the 17s. They put the burner on the 17. Gotcha. It's, there was one I was reading up on this in 1953 during the Korean War. Our U.S. government put out a, a thing called Operation Moolah and they were offering $50,000 to any defector that would bring one of these airplanes over and give it to the U.S. government. And they said, we'll give you 50,000 bucks, you fly your, you know, you defect to the U.S., we'll give you asylum, we'll give you everything. Yeah. Well, you gotta look, in 1953, $50,000 was a lot of money. That's a whole lot of money. That's, That's about like five million today. That's right, that's a whole lot of money. And see, we've even still got, I always think this is cute. Looking for. Is that right there? That's the gun side ball. Is it really? Yeah. So from, oh yeah, the cockpit up there, uh -huh. they would just look down this and... Well, I think you had, you had an optic. 
an optic type flight up there. Mm -hmm. And you, that was kind of like the, the front bead on your shotgun barrel. There you go. Huh. So now help me, these were auxiliary fuel tanks, right? Mm -hmm. The whole How time. How much fuel total does this thing hold with the aux tanks? Uh, uh, 210 two. there, 75 in the back. Two and then the other 85. one's 100 and something, isn't it? Morning, man. <laughs> 200 gallons internal. So 275, 270, and. That's okay. 220 and 70, so that's, that's 290. 290, there. and then 100, 100. So that's right at 500 gallons. Yeah. Yeah. So and how then, long would it take to burn through that 500 gallons if you were horsing around? If you were horsing around, if you were horsing around, I'm 10,000 foot, not long. Without the drops, I want to say it's hour. Right at between 45 minutes and an hour, depending on how, how bad you keep the throttle in. Yeah. What What are some of the speeds? How much does this thing? How much does it weigh? A lot. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna guess about 10.5. What sort of speeds? You know. V and E and all that. Uh, it kind of will stuff. not break 0 0.92 miles. Okay. I'm sorry, it will not break miles for sure. But there's a big red light that if I can find it on the dash. You see that mock warning light at the top right there? Oh, yeah. It, that comes on at 0 0.92. When it reaches mock speed, the wingtips tuck. And when they do, it tumbles through the air like a rock. Okay, yeah. That's what I was... it, 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 it don't just fall out of the sky. It becomes a rock. Okay. When you were were in it a few times, mm -hmm. what speeds did you see in real life? It'll run point <laughs> nine too. Will it actually do it? Mm -hmm. Holy crap! No, that's that's high. Yeah, that's right. you that's good. That, you you got to go high. Well, well sure, you're probably in what thirty thousand feet. You got to go to eighteen firewall forward. Go to eighteen with it pull it back. And as soon as you pull it back, it doesn't ever slow down until it starts until you start to sit. Mm -hmm. But it'll run point nine too. Yeah, and what sort of altitudes would you guys fly at? We never got much above 10. Sure. Well, yeah. like when you went to Columbus, the, the 16, yeah. go to 16, stay up there a little way. If you decide to air reject, you put your feet right there, because if you do not, you they will call you nubby from now on, because it's going to take your knees off with the dash. Oh, yeah, I bet. All see, right, so, the, so your legs are so far up in there, if you don't put them there first, you're going to be, you're going to be, Knee down. Oh yeah, I bet. Yeah, yeah. All, right. All right, here we go. So we got. Uh, let's go down. Uh, lift off. So we're talking 115 to 125 knot rotation speed. Mm -hmm. Climb out at 250 knots. Uh, 30 max crew. Uh, it's RPM gear extension. So 243 knots is what your gear extension speed is. Mm -hmm. Jack on, that's cooking. And then we got... You don't float this baby to the ground. <laughs> no. Your base, your final is 125 knots, which is still cooking, but it's slower than what I thought it would be in this. I bet it's so mushy at that speed. I bet it's barely controllable. We well, what's the stall speed? Does it have 100 brakes, 90 touchdown at 105? So it's going to be close to that. I'm going to probably say 90. Yeah, these are your emergency gear lock handles. <laughs> so you just grab them suckers, yank it, and they go BAM! And yes, and they work. Are they... Um, with nitrogen, or is it hooked up just to the weight of the? Mm -mm, they're nitrogen. Oh, it is a nitrogen. Under, blow under off. normal circumstances, and see that's what these uh, accumulator bottles are for. Mm -hmm. One of them, I think, is for landing for the landing gear. The other one is for flaps. Um, uh, now flaps, you have to, and this says it on the label in here. You go from up to neutral. Takes a pump out. Mm -hmm. When you have to go to twenty. And then to 55, you cannot go straight to 55. Sure. Okay, I think generally because you got to let everything slow down a little bit before you get that last little bit. Oh, sure, yeah. All right. Uh-oh, Matt's done found uh -oh. something. All right, he says, uh-oh. Maximum takeoff uh -oh. weight's 13.5. Woo! Uh, That's two fat butts in a full tank again. Maximum true speed, 548. That's, yeah, your true air speed. Mm-hmm. It says so, maximum speed is 611 miles an hour. There you go. Which Cruise is, speeds 520 your, miles yeah. an hour. Your flight ranges. Oh, here we go, what yeah. Is, service ceiling is 51,000 foot. Wait, he's getting different numbers. Where are you getting those numbers? That's different than what's in this book. This I'm book. getting them off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Everything on the internet's true. Yeah, you can, if it's on the internet, if it's on the Google, you can believe it. Well, it's got to be true. That is what well, it is. So. Yeah, all right, so here, what's... What's written that down not com, in the internet. Com, that was coming from the Planes of Fame Air Museum's website. 
Oh, okay. I'll All right, well. I'll off a Russian encyclopedia <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah. They're a little optimistic. That's what it is. They're optimistic. <laughs> it's propaganda. More our jets are faster, yeah. you know, fly further, all that. So we got 548 knot uh, maximum true airspeed. Service ceiling of 40, we'll call it 48,000 feet. Now here's, here's what I like best is from zero sea level to 16,000 feet, it takes two and a half minutes. Now you've probably burned through 400 of your gallons doing that, but still. Now it does it does eat up a little bit of runway. Yes. Uh, it takes you know 1870 feet, and that's probably their short takeoff setting is you know full power flaps the whole yes. bit. And Landing you, a little bit longer, 24. And you got to kind of hang out and ground effect. Yeah, yeah. Tuck your gears and. Yep. Like a T33. Mm-hmm. Now, where, do you remember what size caliber that was? Because we were it's trying to figure a, that out. It says it in here in some of these books. You just got to figure it out. Imagine the shells on that sucker are probably this big around. It's in that other the book. Plane. <laughs> it's in that other, it's in that other book that I picked up. Okay, here we go. Gross takeoff weight, 10.7. You know what's funny? If these, I, I mean, I guess because air brakes speed is exponential on forces mm -hmm. so the faster you go the smaller your control you surface to needs to be airplanes armament included one 12.7 millimeter cap millimeter caliber machine gun 12 that's not that big one wait with 150 rounds of ammo and one hp 23 with ammunition of 60 rounds that was a cannon oh there you go now we're talking yeah and, if i remember correctly the cannon mounted on the left the machine gun was on the right that and then a, a, a camera in the nose. That is just fantastic. It did not have the camera. The machine got. gun was installed on the port side of the of fuselage nose. Okay, so that'd be the left side. Machine gun mount is equipped with a hoisting mechanism, which is underneath the bottom. When servicing the weapon, the mount can be lowered by cables. That's where the batteries and some of the avionics are now. Yeah. To try to get the CG right on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, automatic gun sight, photographic equipment, a lot of different. I mean, we got a kajillion books on this thing. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is one of the manuals for the MIG, and so is this one, and this one, and all of those, and the three on the bottom, and all of this, and that one, and that one, and that one, and all of those. Oh, and don't forget these right here. All of these are for that MIG. What do you do with that? Read a lot. There's, yeah, what sort of there, what sort of thrust is this? There's in? the beast. Oh, there you go. Here's here's our money to noise converter right here. That can that can that's very efficient to converting a lot of money to a lot of noise. When I was in A and P school, we had a cutaway of not this engine, but something similar to it. And we got what were we looking for? The thrust. Thrust. That's that's at idle is fifty. These are kilograms, so it's 2.2 to get pounds. So we're talking 4,500 pounds of thrust, give or take. That's that's not shabby. That's duration not over five minutes. <laughs> For what? Oh, when you really crank it? Yeah, three, oh, three is RPM, four is thrust. So 22. Yeah, that's an extra 500 pounds. So you're you're talking. What is 20? What does that equate out to? 22, 44, 45. So probably 40, close to 5,000 pounds of thrust when you're firewalled on this thing. Yeah. Well, say we so had we got all the fly. How long did he fly? So 2001. Well, he got, he got it flying, and just about the time he was really going places in it, 9 11 hit. So that was, yeah, 01. That was September right after that. 9, yeah. 9 11 hit, yeah. and it shut everything down. Especially, and it, especially, I mean, especially this. Yeah, I imagine that you know the government was not real happy about having a Russian MiG well, flying the thing, around the thing, after the thing that was so funny when he was talking to the lady at the FAA, she was talking about this and that, not <clears> wanting <throat> to let him be able to fly it and whatever. And he said, "Man, I could pull up beside Air Force One and he could just gas on it and drive off and leave me." I mean, the air airspace wasn't shut down. It was a little while. It was a solid six months or something like that. It was real weird. Oh, it was probably 18 general. months before yeah, we, we got, got where you run us one again. She, oh, wow. she faxed us a permit. Yeah, no, that's, that's pretty yeah. Cool. Okay, so then was test flying it, getting all the main flights to get its airworthiness certificate checked off. 9-11 happened, had to park this thing for a minute. And then, that, then back in, what about, 2003, 
started there showing it again. Okay, take it. because he was showing, he was scheduled oh, yeah, to go to the, the 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 Friday of nine after nine eleven. He was supposed to take it to Tupelo to the um, <clears throat> air show up there in Tupelo, and it was like I say a good two years after that, eighteen months, and they had it. He carried it back up there. What? So I see some damage to the drop tank, the wingtip, and the aileron. Walk me through. What happened with that? A truck or a tug it was parked, or something? It was parked under. We had a drive-through hangar down on the south end, two drive-throughs. They were parked there. They have a spill cart. It's an old luggage cart, is what it is. But they full of full of floor dry, all absorbent. That's yeah, okay. pig mats. That it weighs about three thousand pounds. And they're supposed to um, hook it behind a uh, something with a panel hitch. A tug or whatever. Well, and they didn't they, have one of those at the they time. They did not have a pencil hook. They had a trailer hitch ball. <laughs> and they just leave that stupid tongue sitting No, they didn't even have it. It's better than that. They had them little Chinese trucks that you drive on the wrong side. Yeah. That didn't even have a hitch on the back. They tied it to the bumper with a rope. rope. And they driving down there too fast. And he went to make a turn to go to where it was. And when he turned, it turned and oh. broke the rope. And it just made a big general thing and running there and it was up on the jacks because we had just put that strut on and it was up on the jacks and it knocked it all cattywampus. Wait, how long ago was this? 11. 11? Oh, or two, so it's just, oh, like, man. December of 10. Uh, huh? December of 10. Yeah, December of 10 they hit it, yeah. And yeah, we wow. found it New Year's Day of 11. Yeah. Yeah, Bird. Oh, they didn't tell you the whole time? Oh, no. We called the sheriff and the FBI. And, then, and, the, sheriff, and, the, and the sheriff came here. out here to to look at the G-Cash's camera system, because they've got a very elaborate camera system. And the man told them, said, well, there's no need to look, said, we've run over it. But when the local manager called Memphis to, to report it, the people in Memphis told him, don't tell anybody. Oh. So it took about a month to figure out who ran over it. So you can imagine his mood. And some, he and was some, already, some he was place, already and, not real friendly. In mm -hmm. some place, there's some, DVD, there's some DVDs, and, and it's probably still on his computer, if I can remember the password of the video mm -hmm. of it running over it. So yeah. it was a push cart and it hit. So well, see, it twisted. Basically, that's it hit, what, that's it hit where back the, that's there. Where the, tank the, damage, the, the damage to the bottom of this is where it twisted it into the jack. Oh, right here. Yep. Yeah. All right, here, size. Come over here. And... So the, this, it hit the tank and it shoved the tank well, over. It, well, it, and hit, that the airplane, it, so it hit the airplane and twisted the airplane on the jack and the tanks on it, it pushed it. So this is one of the tow carts. Where it hit the aileron. That line that goes right through there, all the way across, is where it hit the wingtip and the aileron over here. You can, you can look, you can see it. So it's right here. Come around on this side, you can see it really good. Mm -hmm. So it mushed this tip of this wingtip right here in, and it hit all the way through here, and then shoved that's, the that's over here. airplane over. Here's the aileron here. Yep, that's a square corner right there. Right there. You can see that line right there is that line right there. Yep. That line right there is that, that line right there. And that, that corner is that, this. That corner is that then. We have a match. Man. The points, right? It was just the crinkling of the skin or you know the control surface. Yes. No. And this and there's a rod and some other stuff. That's oh, a, the little tip of it broke off right there. Yeah. Honestly, that's not really all that bad. It's and just, as it's just thick a, as this it's freaking just, metal is. That is not a Cessna. No, <laughs> this is this is no 165 sky catcher. Right. That's for darn sure, man. That's what I told you was built like a Golly. tank. Golly. When I told you it was built like a tank, I meant it. I think my wing walk area is not as thick as this is down here. This that's, is crazy. I, so I've never seen anything built like it, except for another Russian. And so we can see down here, oh, in there, there it is, right here. That's where the jack, this, the plane, when it twisted around, this part hit the jack that holds it up yep. right there. So it came and twisted and bumped into it that way because the jack and everything yeah, twisted your, around. This is where you're... Or your tank would have been hanging. Yeah, because it kind of sits. And you see how big a tank is, so there's not a whole lot of room with the tanks on, you just on this other side. Oh, yeah, we can see on. the other side, see how close it is. And the tank's on it, so. Oh, yeah, there you go. So it didn't take much. No, it didn't take a lot of twists. So, so yeah, this that little bit of it, and bam, right into it. Yep. 
Oh man. How'd you like to just get it? When was the last time he flew this? Yeah, April of 2010. So, so April of 2010, was that the last annual or was that? Last, that was the last annual. We'd have to find his flight logs wherever in the world they would be. So let me let me ask you guys this. Do you, uh, do you guys think we can pull this thing out and see if we can't get it fired up? We'll try. We're going to give it a whirl. We got to open some stuff up and look at some things. My fire extinguisher, they said, was not adequate. 